Praise the Lord. What a great uh, singing that we've enjoyed tonight. I, I don't know about you, but I'm having a revival sitting right there. I just praise the Lord. The good singing, Christ honoring, and you can just uh, sense the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what it ought to be, isn't it? Uh, what else can we sing about but about the blood and about heaven and but about the Lord Jesus Christ? And I'm telling you, if you're saved by the grace of God tonight, then uh, he's put a new song in your heart. And I rejoice in that. I, I tell you, I, I remember before I was saved uh, how I lived for myself and wanted to please others and really just made me downright miserable. But then when I came to know the Lord Jesus Christ, I realized that there's nobody worth living for but Jesus. Amen. And I'm so thankful tonight for my salvation. Amen. And you know, the greatest thing to happen in my life is when I got saved. Amen. When the Holy Spirit of God convicted my heart and I knew I was lost and I was on my way to hell, I couldn't save myself. It was the Holy Spirit of God, the conviction of the Holy Spirit, God saying, I love you, I love you. And it made me uncomfortable and I didn't, I didn't really like it, I wrestled with it. But when I placed my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I want you to know I've never been the same. Amen. And I don't ever want to go back to what I was before I was saved. What have I got to go back to? Nothing. But praise God, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ has uh, changed me. He's given me a hope and a future. And I, I just, I love when we come to church and sing about heaven. Because <laughs> that's, that's our home, isn't it? I mean, our citizenship's not in this world. And uh, as we live in this world, though, we need to make sure that we let people know where we're going. And we need to make sure that we take somebody with us by the grace and power and mercy of God. There's a lost and dying world out there. People that you and I come in contact with. We rub elbows with each and every day. And you know God expects us to be his instruments to share the gospel, to share the good news. We ought to talk about Jesus and the difference that he has made and is making in our life. I'm telling you that you know you may be here tonight and you may say, Pastor Mark, I've not been called to be an evangelist. I've not been called to be a pastor or missionary. But I want you to know you've been called to do the Great Commission. And that's the responsibility of every believer. Uh, we're to do our part and to share the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we think about evangelism and, and sharing. I want to preach to you tonight a message God's laid on my heart entitled, Be Aware and Ready to Share. We're in Acts chapter 3 tonight. We'll be uh, focusing on verses 13 through 20. So if you, if you have the Word of God, if you'll turn with me to Acts chapter 3, uh, starting in verse 13. Be aware and ready to share. Of course, uh, these verses uh, follow where uh, there's the healing of the lame man, uh, Peter and John. They were on their way to the temple, and they came in contact with this, with this lame man. They, many had passed him by time and time again. And to be honest with you, uh, John and Peter probably didn't have time for this man, but they were uh, aware and they were ready to share. And, uh, and I love Peter says, you know, I don't have any money for you, but I'll tell you what I do have. I have the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and place your faith in him. And, of course, the power of God worked and did a, a mighty work that only God could do through Peter and John. And, and so then we find ourselves down in uh, verse 11. Uh, that it caught a, a lot of people's attention. A lot of people saw this. And a lot of people knew this lame man. They had passed him by many times. Uh, look with me in verse 11. I want us to go back to verse 11 um, as we begin tonight, Acts chapter 3. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us, as though by our own power or holiness... We had made this man to walk. What had happened here is all this attention now had been uh, put on Peter and John and on this man that had been healed. And, and so, you know, Peter could have taken advantage of this and said, you know, I'm enjoying this a lot. The attention and you know what I think I might do, John? I think I might just write a book about it. And you know what? Maybe we can have a conference and we can charge admission and we can tell this great story and man, we can get rich off of it. Or, or he could have just enjoyed all the attention, you know, glory in, uh, in themselves. But you know what, what Peter and, and John did? They, they took advantage of this opportunity 
And they pointed everyone to Jesus. And they shared the gospel. What greater message is there to share but the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? That's the greatest news of all, amen? I mean, what better message could we share? There's no greater example of love on the face of this earth in the history of mankind, in the present or in the future of man. There's no greater example than God's love. The best news of all is that Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. And it's okay that the Bible tells me so. I believe the Word of God. In Eric, I believe it's inspired. I believe it's infallible, the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So let's share the good news. Be aware and ready to share. There's something about evangelism, and that is that we do it. I mean, we need to be broken for the lost. God help us to to want to share the good news and to be used of God as his instruments uh, to evangelize. Someone uh, told Dwight L. Moody once that they didn't like his method of evangelism. And he asked them what their method was. And they said, I really don't have one. And Moody replied, I like mine better. <laughs> you know, I believe there's a lot of church members today. We, we, we don't have a method of evangelism. I wonder tonight, you know, do we have a, a, a method or do we, do we find a, a, a habit of talking about Jesus? We need to share Jesus, share stories um, that we enjoy all the time, don't we? I mean, I'm sure many of us, uh, we came maybe to church this morning and we just couldn't help but talk about the Clemson game last night. Oh, man, it was great. Um, you know, they, they looked like it, they were sunk and looked like it was over, but, uh, but man, they were able to pull it out. And I, I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, but I'm sure if I ask, how many of you talked about that? I'm sure all over this place, uh, 90%, if not every one of us would say, I talked about that game last night. You know, we like to share stories about our favorite football team or accomplishments. Uh, my son yesterday uh, pitched a one-hitter in six innings. And I, I was so proud of him for that. I, you better believe I've talked about that. I've shared some stories about my sons and about my daughter and, and their accomplishments and nothing wrong with that. And we need to brag on our kids and nothing wrong with that whatsoever. We talk about sports and, man, it's deer hunting season, isn't it? Oh, my goodness. We love, we love deer hunting, don't we? I mean, the, it's getting a little crisp in the air and, and it won't be long. There'll be frost on the pumpkin and, man, it's going to be deer hunting season and and uh, we talk about that, and, and we love to talk about hunting and fishing and, and all of this. But, folks, I want you to know tonight that of all the things that we talk about, we need to talk about Jesus. Yes. There's a lost and dying world out there that's on their way to hell, and we need to share the good news of Jesus. Not only share it, but live it. Let people see the difference that Jesus is making in our life. Well, we find ourselves here in Acts chapter 3, and the book of Acts was written by the same author who wrote the Gospel of Luke. It's interesting that Luke ends and Acts begins with the ascension of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Acts continues the story of Jesus. But now Acts is acting by the power of the Holy Spirit through his church. And so, folks, we got to make sure that we go in the power of the Holy Spirit. I mean, do we, do we, you understand what I'm talking about? The power of the Holy Spirit, being filled with the Holy Spirit. Making sure we understand that it's God's work. We don't argue with anybody or talk somebody into salvation. We just share the facts of our faith and what God has done and is doing in, in my life. You know, you may be an atheist here tonight. You, you may say, I don't even believe in God, but you can't deny the facts of what God is doing in my heart and life. And we need to talk about that. Praise God for our salvation. Praise God that we have a personal relationship with God Almighty. And so Acts continues acting by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's also interesting that Acts, uh, that Luke uh, moves from Jerusalem or moves to Jerusalem and Acts moves from Jerusalem. I mean, the church uh, it has, has started under the power of the Holy Spirit and the church now is being spread to the uttermost. Not just a centralized area of Jerusalem, but it's being spread to the uttermost through the power of the Holy Spirit. Acts demonstrates the beginning of worldwide expansion of the church. In Acts 1.8, Jesus tells his followers, listen to this, I'm sure you're familiar with it, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be my witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and in Samaria, and the other most parts of the earth. I mean, I think about, you know, where's our Jerusalem? Well, for Blue Ridge View, it's right here in Pickens. 
Man, what a, what a beautiful drive up here uh, through the country up here at Blue Ridge View uh, Baptist Church. Uh, this is your Jerusalem. Um, my Jerusalem is Liberty, South Carolina. Oh, we ought to be broken for picking South Carolina. We ought to be broken for Liberty, South Carolina. That God would use us to be his witnesses to share the good news of Jesus. After the Holy Spirit came into the hearts of believers, as Jesus promised would take place, you can always take God at his word, folks. He promised that. God was now ready to use his disciples as seen in the church's first recorded miracle that we find here in the healing of the lame man in Acts chapter 3. And as believers who know the truth and who have been set free from the bondage of sin. Boy, I tell you, choir, man, I love that. I love the singing and how we've been set free and nail it to the cross and the power of the blood. There is power in the blood. His blood will wash our sin away, praise God, the power of the blood. And we need to, we need to just tell people what Jesus has done in our hearts and lives. And we've been set free. We've been set free from the bondage of sin because we have been redeemed. And redemption means that, that Jesus paid it all with his own royal blood for our sin. Uh, that we've been set free. And uh, we should strive to be used of God through the Lord, through the leading, through the power of the Holy Spirit to share the gospel. So uh, we find ourselves here in verse 13. And I want to continue reading through verse 20 tonight as as we begin, as we think about, be aware and ready to share. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you and killed the prince of life whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. And his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know, yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And now, brethren, I wot that through ignorance ye did it, as did also your rulers. But those things which God before had shown by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, dear Lord Jesus, I pray tonight, that your word would go forth. Not Mark's word. Lord, we're desperate tonight for your word. God, I pray that your word would find lodging in hearts. Help us right now, Lord, to open our hearts. I pray that every one of us would, would just simply ask, Lord, what do you have for me tonight? And God, as you reveal it, Lord, I pray that we'd be obedient. And Lord, we would, we would trust you and commit, Lord, however you lead us, God, that we would leave this place changed by your glory and for our good. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Well, some of you might say, you know, how do I, how do I witness, or, or how can I witness? I'm, I'm not really comfortable with, with witnessing. Or maybe, maybe I'm just not, you know, ready to witness. Well, I want to say to you tonight that if you're saved and you have the Holy Spirit in your heart, then you're as ready as you're ever going to get to share the gospel and to tell people about Jesus. Um, this morning, we had Old Fashioned Day at Liberty First Baptist Church. I got to do something I've never been able to do, and that was preaching overalls. Man, I, man, I love that. No, that, that. That was so comfortable. We had, we had just a, a great day this morning. But I, but I think about old fashioned, those old-fashioned water pumps and how uh, they needed to be primed. You know, prime means that you prepare or make ready for a particular purpose of operation. So an old-fashioned water pump was primed. They would pour a small amount of water in the top to flush the air out. And then it was ready to pump water. It was ready to do the very thing that it was uh, created to do. Well, you know, when you repaint something, a lot of times you've got to put a coat or a primer so the object will be ready for painting. In the same way, the Holy Spirit primes believers, making us ready to share the gospel. 
Yes, if you're saved here by the grace of God, then you have the Holy Spirit within your heart. And you are primed and you are ready to share the gospel and to share the good news. And I pray tonight that someone here tonight will commit, oh dear God, Lord, I, I want to be aware and ready to share and to tell people the good news. You know, you work with somebody that needs to hear about Jesus. You live beside somebody that needs to hear about Jesus. I mean, we, we interact with people out in the community, right here in Pickens County. And, uh, you know, we're the only gospel that they're going to read. I mean, we need to let people hear the good, clear message of the gospel and see Jesus in our hearts and lives. And, you know, God will lay somebody on your heart if we'll ask him. I pray tonight, maybe, maybe right now, as I'm preaching, there's somebody, there's a co-worker, there's a family member, and man, God has laid them on your heart right now. Would you pray for them? Listen, God lays them on your heart. The best thing we can do is pray for them first and ask God to get a hold of them. Ask God to open the eyes of their hearts. And then when God gives us opportunity, I pray that we will be aware and ready to share. So tonight, I want us to look tonight at just uh, at two simple truths tonight about being aware and ready to share. First of all, um, I want us to understand that, that uh, if, if we're going to witness, if we're going to be aware and ready to share, we've got to share the truth. Um, share the truth. That's, that's what Peter did here in, in these verses I just read, starting in verse 13. and verses 13 through 18, you'll see that Peter shared the truth. He redeemed the time, so to speak. He didn't waste the opportunity. He didn't boast or brag on himself or, uh, you know, any of that. I mean, he just simply, um, he just took advantage of the opportunity and he shared the gospel, shared the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no question that the healing of the lame man drew a crowd. But Peter used the opportunity to boldly share the gospel. You know, folks, what breaks my heart, I know there's times, perhaps last week, last month, where the Lord was trying to get my attention to share with someone. Maybe I missed the opportunity. There, there, there are times that, that I know Times that I know that I, you know, maybe I had a good excuse. Lord, I got, I got to be here. Lord, I'm, you know, I've got to, I've got to have a meeting or, um, you know, a good excuse. We, we have a good excuse, but yet, I know there's times when, when I didn't take advantage of opportunities to share. And represented among us here tonight, I'm sure are many stories like that where we didn't take advantage of opportunities. To share. Well, folks, what do we share? Well, we, we need to share the truth. Um, there, there are some things in uh, Peter's presentation of the gospel that shows that Peter had courage and that he had boldness. And what was the difference? It was the power of the Holy Spirit. I mean, if you were to look at Acts chapter 4 and, and, and verse 8, uh, then or Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, he, he spoke and he shared. I mean, we need to understand that it was the power of God at work with him. Notice he was filled with the Holy Ghost, the power of God. He was filled with the power of God. Don't let the phrase, you know, the Holy Ghost within, don't, don't let that, that, that scare us. I mean, the Holy Spirit's the best friend we've got. <laughs> He'll make us uncomfortable just like, just like a, a, a father will discipline his son. He'll discipline us. But you know what, folks? That's the greatest assurance of salvation that you've got is when God makes you uncomfortable and doesn't let you just live any old way. I mean, he'll get a hold of us. And, and so, you know, we need to become familiar with the Holy Spirit within us. He'll guide us. We need to be open and listen for opportunities to share the good news. I wonder, though, I wonder if instead of being filled with the Holy Spirit, if we miss opportunities to share the good news because we're filled with the junk of this world. Listen, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, there needs to be some confession and we need to get right with God and get some stuff. I mean, we go out into the world and we're bombarded with temptations and, and you can't even watch a football game without, without uh, some uh, commercial or some uh, you know, advertisement coming on. And man, we're just bombarded. You're not even looking for it and it'll find you. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, we're bombarded with temptation and if we're not careful... If we're not in tune with God, if we're not confessing in an attitude of prayer, then we'll find ourselves being filled with junk instead of filled 
with the Holy Spirit. Being filled with the Holy Spirit. Maybe we lack power in our lives. You know, maybe, maybe we aren't sharing the gospel, sharing the good news like we ought to because we're just simply not filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, Peter, I mean, we don't need to miss this. Peter didn't go in his own strength. The power of God was at work in Peter because he was filled with the Holy Ghost. Verse 8 of chapter 4 reminds us that. In this passage, Peter showed that there was more to the story than just the healing of the lame man. And he took advantage and he shared the truth. Now, there's some essentials to the gospel that we're going to find here that I want us to see. Look at verse 13 with me. You know what Peter did? He made clear who Jesus was. Look, look at verse 13. Um, verse 13 of, of chapter 3. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob and God of our fathers hath glorified who? His son Jesus, whom you delivered up. Peter, in the power of the Holy Spirit, Peter says, you know, you delivered him up. We want to make very clear the power that raised this man up from the dead is the very one that, that you rejected. I mean, uh, Peter is making it clear that it's the Lord Jesus Christ. He's not saying it's, listen, it, it's not me. And, and there's, a, there's some people, I'm afraid, that's looking to man. Maybe they're following a preacher or something like that. It's not man. But, but Peter says, look, we don't want to take credit. We don't make sure that it's Jesus. And so, uh, first of all, he made clear that Jesus was the difference. I mean, when, when we share with people, do we just brag on ourselves as if we got it all figured out? Or do we share the fact that it's Jesus? And then Peter shared uh, that we are responsible for the death of Jesus. I mean, when, if you look at verses 13 and 15, that's what he's doing. You're responsible. You did that. And I want to say to you tonight, in 2016 even, I want us to all understand that every one of us was responsible for the death of Jesus. Because when he was on the cross, you were on his mind. I mean, he paid it all. He died for you and me. I mean, Romans 5, 8, one of my favorite passages of Scripture. God commendeth his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Listen, we share that we got to share the truth. I mean, it may not be comfortable and it may not be warm fuzzy. You know, it may, it, and we, we, we're, we might be tempted to sugarcoat it and water it down. But folks, people have to understand that they're lost. And that Jesus died for their sin. There's an offense to the gospel. Whether we like it or not. The fact of the matter is we've got to share the truth. Someone prays to receive Christ. And they have absolutely no uh, conviction of sin. Or recognition of sin. I'm telling you they're still lost. I mean you can't get a man saved until you get him lost. And you get him lost because he understands the truth. That it's his sin that nailed Jesus to the cross. And then, by the way, it's the Holy Spirit that gets him lost anyway. I mean, it's God's work. We're just, we're just faithful to share the truth. We're responsible for the death of Jesus, verses 13 and 15. And then, verse 15, the truth about his resurrection. Look with me down in verse 15 of chapter 3. And killed the prince of life, whom God hath raised from the dead. We are, we are witnesses. Isn't that, isn't that good? Isn't that great tonight? We serve a risen Savior. Amen. I mean, He's alive. He, he, he did, he's still not on the cross, praise God. He, he's not on the cross, but, but folks, He's not in the grave either, praise God. He's alive. We serve a risen Savior. Why would we not tell people about the fact that we serve a risen Savior? Why would we, not, why would we keep it to ourselves? So uh, Peter shares the essentials here. The truth about the resurrection. Jesus is alive. Yes, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He's alive. He's not dead, praise God. His remains are not in the tomb. He's alive. And He's the only way. If we're going to have eternal life, it's only going to come through a living Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. There's power in the name of Jesus. Look at me in verse uh, 16. And his name, through faith, in his name hath made this man strong. Peter's making, making it very clear. It's the name of Jesus. Jesus is the one that did this work. And, and Jesus 
There's power in his name. By the way, every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And so there's, we, we need to share the truth. The, the truth that we're responsible for the death of Jesus. Make, make a good, clear message. It's, it's Jesus. It's either Jesus or nothing. Jesus is alive. He died, but praise God, he's, he's alive. And there's power in his name. And, and all of this happened as part of God's plan. If you'll look, look with me at verse 18. Chapter 3, verse 18. But those things which God before had shown by the mouth of all his prophets. Look at this. That Christ should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. Listen to me, folks. God didn't just come up with this plan, you know, um, as, as events were happening and it took him by surprise. And what are we going to do? And No, in eternity past, God had a plan. He had you in mind. Right. If it were you or me, you know what we'd do? If we create something that rebelled to, uh, on us, we'd chunk it. We'd throw it aside. And we'd start over. But God didn't do that. He had a plan. This is all part of, of God's plan. And so we need to share the truth. Let people know. Listen, God's got a wonderful plan for your life. But we've got to trust in His plan through the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, I think about, I think about the fact that Peter says in verse 15, that they were witnesses. I mean, they, they had witnessed God raising Jesus from the dead. I mean, he's able to tell them, we're witnesses of this. You might say, Pastor Mark, I wasn't there. I didn't see it with my own eyes. No, you may not have been there physically, but praise God, you were there. <laughs> he died for you, and, yeah. and, uh, and you trusted in him as your Lord and Savior. And he defeated death, hell, and the grave, praise God. And, and so my question for you tonight is we think about being a witness. Peter says, I was a witness of this. And he's witnessing and he's sharing the truth, the power of the gospel, the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, we need to share the truth. When I think about being a witness, when have we experienced a time in our lives which we were witnesses of God's power in us? Well, I can go back to I guess it was about 1986. I was at the Bailey Smith Crusade at the Easley High School football stadium. Of course, now they've, they've moved it and everything. Now, was it Bryce Field or something? You know, I, I remember being there at the Bailey Smith. Bailey Smith pointing the way, pointing me to Christ. And I remember, I remember the Holy Spirit dealing with my heart. My mom and dad, I, I, we were on our way home. We were out there at West End Elementary, and I told them, I said, I need to get saved. God spoke to my heart. God was drawing me because of his great love. I didn't deserve it, but I knew that night I was lost, and I knew I needed to get saved. Greatest day in my life. You know what, I just, I want to add this. You know what the second greatest day of my life was? It's when Valerie and I got married. <laughs> Praise God. God's good, isn't he? Amen. Amen. But the greatest day of my life is when I got saved. Bailey Smith Crusade. I'll never forget it. That's my God story, if you will. And you have a God story tonight. Let's share the truth. Can you be witnesses, you know, like Peter? And can you say, I was, I was a witness of when God spoke to my heart and when God saved my soul. Praise God. And we need to tell that story and share that story. Share the truth of what God did in our heart and what he's continuing to do. Paul declared in Romans 1.16, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Listen to this. For it is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believeth. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. I experienced that. Have you experienced that? I mean you said yes to Jesus and the glorious gospel message. And the power of God worked in your heart and life. And brought you from death to life. The Holy Spirit took up residence in your heart. And now you're a child of the King. You're a part of the family of God. Because you have been adopted into the family of God. I, I don't know about you, but folks, we shouldn't be able to tell that story enough. We need to be aware and ready to share, to share the truth. You know, I had a friend of mine that went, they, they, uh, they had a youth rally at Carowinds. This was, uh, this was about 10 years ago or so. 
They used to call it the big youth thing. I don't know if they still do that or not up there. But they had, uh, they had someone, very famous uh, speaker, and, uh, and he was sharing his testimony. Now, I didn't hear it with, with my own ears, but my friend was telling me about this. And you know, his testimony was basically that he didn't want to do bad stuff anymore. And so he decided he's going to become a Christian. He just wasn't going to do bad things anymore. And, and uh, he just got up one day and just changed his mind and said, you know what? I'm just not going to, going to do those things anymore. He basically, you know, just his testimony was just totally absent of sin. There wasn't any conviction. Uh, you know, it was just, just a watered down. Basically, he was, he was challenging those youth to do what he, be like me. Just make a decision. Listen, listen, you can do God a favor. That's basically what he was saying. Do God a favor and just do good now. You know, God got to be, you know, lucky to have you like, like, like me. There, there was just no mention of need of forgiveness. Listen, we need to, we need to understand. If we, if we get saved, we got to understand that we're lost and that we need a Savior. Listen, if I could just get up one day and change my mind and be saved, why would Jesus have had to go to the cross? He went to the cross because sin alienates and separates us from God. And the only way that sin can be dealt with is the death of Jesus on the cross. He's the supreme, ultimate sacrifice. And folks, he'll never have to do it again. One time and sufficient. And that's it. The power of the blood. Yes, there's power in the blood. And so we need to share the truth. Share the good news. The gospel. You know what we need to do in our, I believe, in our Baptist churches often? We need to make sure that our, that our church members understand what the gospel really is. Because it's, it's just, it's so watered down anymore. It's so sugar coated. Here, here's, here's what people do. You want to go to heaven? Oh yeah, who, who doesn't want to go to heaven? You want a savior that will fix your problems? Oh yeah, his name's Jesus. Man, he'll be your best friend and he'll fix your problems. And all of a sudden, they say yes to that. And then they're given a false sense of eternal security thinking they're saved. And there's no conviction. There's no recognition of sin. And I'm just wondering, why did Jesus die on the cross if we don't need to deal with our sin? And so we need to share the truth, folks. Now, there is friendship evangelism. Don't, don't, don't misunderstand me. And that is, you know, we befriend someone. I mean, listen, don't tell somebody about God until you tell God about that someone. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, God lays somebody on your heart. You pray for them. Pray for them. Go to them. Find out what their interest is. They may like deer hunting like you, or they may like the Clemson Tigers like you. You know, they may like the Carolina Gamecocks. I don't know why anybody would like them, but, you know, they, they might. <laughs> But, you know, there's some interest there. Maybe there's some family uh, interest. And there's, 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 uh, there's conversations that you can have. And, 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 yes, we build those relationships. But, but it's all the problem with friendship evangelism is that we never get to the evangelism. Right. You know, we never get to the message. What's the message? The message of the gospel Amen. that you and I should embrace and that we should share. Amen. So this evening... As we think about our story, when's the last time we told somebody about it? I mean, it's supposed to have been the greatest day in our life, right? I mean, when we come to know Christ, do we share the essentials like Peter did? Do we share who Jesus really is and how he died for us? It was our, we were responsible for the death. I mean, do we share that? Do we talk about how he's alive, the power of God brought him? Raised him from the dead? Do we, do we share that? I mean, folks, do we share the essentials of the gospel? So we need to look for opportunities to share the truth. We should make sure we make clear the essentials of the gospel. We can't leave certain things out because we're afraid it might offend somebody. By the way, Peter and John knew that the Sadducees were among the crowd and they didn't believe in the resurrection. Guess what they did? They said Jesus resurrected. He's alive. They weren't worried about offending somebody. Listen, I'll just add this. And I need I know her, I know time's getting away, 
But political correctness is killing our country. I mean, we're so scared of offending anybody. And so that has come into the church. And we don't want to offend anybody. And we want, we want warm fuzzies. And we, we want to meet people's emotional needs. And we turn the church into a glorified social club. We don't want to offend anybody. If somebody's going to get saved, they've got to get offended, folks. They've got to understand that they're lost. And there's no other way to heaven but through Jesus Christ. He is it. He died for you. That's the gospel. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. I'm lost. I'm undone without Christ. But praise God, He's changing me from the inside out. And we need to share that. Our God story. Our testimony. How I came to know Christ. And, and, uh, and what Christ is doing in me since then. Share things that we pray about. How God comes through. Storms that, that come up and, and God comes through. The faithfulness of God. What we do at, at First Baptist at our prayer meeting on Wednesday night. We always start with a time of praise. You know, time of giving God praise. Maybe it's answered prayer. Maybe God didn't answer a prayer, but God showed His grace and His love, and, and God uh, helped us to, to get through it. You know, if He leads us to it, He'll lead us through it. Amen? And so we share that. Let's, um, listen, we don't need to talk about and brag on ourselves. Let's brag on Jesus. That, that's the only thing we need to make, only one we need to make uh, look good is Jesus. And so we need to understand that we share the truth. How am I going to share the gospel? Well, I share the truth. If I ever come to where I try to figure out how I can share it in a way that doesn't offend anybody, then I've got to go back to the drawing board. And I'm afraid there's a lot of ministries today that need to go back to the drawing board. They may be getting a lot of numbers, but folks, what a sad, what a sad day when those people have been led to think they're saved and they're lost. Because they're still in their sin. You don't get saved because you want to go to heaven. You don't. You don't get saved because you want a friend in Jesus. That will fix your problems. You get saved because you're a lost sinner. And you believe Jesus died on the cross. That's what we got to share, folks. Share the truth. And the best friend uh, that someone will have is somebody will tell the truth. Amen? Amen? So may we share the truth. Now, lastly, verses 19 and 20. Quickly, I'll, um, I'll close. Um, not only share the truth, but we need to provide opportunity for response. Nearly every time the gospel was shared in the book of Acts, there was some opportunity for response. Look with me in verse 19 of Acts chapter 3. You see what, what Peter says? Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. You see what Peter's doing? He's saying, go ahead, repent now. You're guilty. You're responsible. Jesus died for you, but Jesus is alive, praise God. Repent. Turn from your ways and turn to Christ. Be converted that your sins may be blotted out. The only way our sins can be blotted out is through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, through God's grace. And Peter's given an opportunity for response. Friendship evangelism is great, but this, is, this ought to be our goal right here. You know, I mean, we want to get to the message. We want to give opportunity for response. That's what Peter did. And the good news of the gospel is that when we turn from our sin and turn to Christ, at that moment, I don't understand it all. I know we're so undeserving. But that moment, when, when I placed and when you placed your faith in the Lord Jesus, you know what happened? Our sins were blotted out. Amen. You know what that means? That means it was erased from the record book. God no longer counts them against you. <laughs> Boy, I don't, I don't understand that. I know me. There's no good in me, folks, except the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We've been robed in the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have been made right with God through the Lord Jesus. And the only way that your co-workers and your lost family members and your lost neighbors and, and uh, people that you come in contact with, the only way they're going to go to heaven is if their sins are blotted out. I mean, we've got to not only share the truth, but we also have to provide opportunity for response. And I want you to know tonight, you can do this. You might say, Pastor Mark, I'm, I'm, just, I'm uncomfortable with this. Listen, it's not you anyway. It's the Holy Spirit. Amen. Listen, maybe we're, we fear failure. What if they laugh at me? What if they reject me? What did they do to Jesus when he's on the cross? It's not about us, folks. And by the way, 
It's God that does the saving. Right. It's God's work. Amen. We're just faithful. Listen, just tell people about Jesus. That's what it's all about. Share the difference Jesus has made and is making in your life. The peace and the joy of the Lord. I mean, they ought to, they ought to see some fruit of that. Patience, and faithfulness, and self-control, humility, all of that ought to be a witness of the difference Jesus makes in our life. You see, I, in closing, we've got to understand that, that what I share has got to match up with what I live. Because the, the worst thing I can do is tell somebody about Jesus and then my life doesn't match up. It does matter how we live. And so I pray tonight that God would move someone to want to share the good news. I believe somebody here tonight, God has laid someone on your heart. I pray tonight that if that's the case, would you, maybe you just want to come here at this altar and just on their behalf, come and, and pray for them that God would work and open the eyes of their heart. That God would, would do His work in their heart. And then pray for God to give an opportunity. Be aware and ready to share. And you know, Peter also said in 1 Peter 3.15, listen to this. He, he, he says that we need to always be ready to give a defense to anyone who asks for a reason of the hope that we have in us. You know what that means? I get a, when, when Peter says to always be ready, I get a, I get a picture of, you know, a, a, a defensive end. And man, what's he doing? <laughs> there he is. I mean, he's just waiting. He's waiting. Sometimes he jumps off sides. He can't wait. You know, I won't jump off sides with the Holy Spirit, but folks, we need to be ready to share the good news. Amen. Now, if I had the cure to cancer, I mean, if I asked how many of us here have been devastated and impacted by cancer, I mean, hands, go ahead, in, in memory or honor of someone, a family. There might be somebody here tonight going through chemo, radiation. I mean, hands all over the place. I'm so thankful that there's, there's a great physician and there's the ultimate healing that's going to come one day by faith in Jesus. Yes. Glorified bodies, can you imagine that? I mean, my goodness, we're, we're not going to sing off key. We're going to be perfect. Man, I, uh, my hair, I'm losing my hair. And, uh, trying to look like, uh, like Stuart. Um, but, you know, I mean, we'll have perfect bodies. Sorry, Stuart. Uh, glorified bodies. He just gave me a look, man. I was getting kind of scared for a minute. Um, but, 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 folks, the only way to live is to live for Jesus. Make sure that your citizenship is in heaven by God's grace, by faith in you. Don't you want to take somebody with you? Yes. I believe God's laid someone on our hearts tonight. And I want to challenge us tonight. Would you come and pray for that individual? And I know it's a scary thing. And the devil's going to try to talk you out of it. The devil's going to say, you can't, you can't reach them. Who do you think you are? God can't use you. It's not about us. The power of God can certainly do a work. If we'll just be obedient, be aware, and be ready to share. Would you come tonight? Now, maybe you're here tonight. You've never been saved. God has not. Maybe you're wrestling with assurance of salvation. I just wonder tonight. What, what about you? If you were to die tonight, do you know that you would go to heaven? Do you have assurance of that? I can't think of a better opportunity, a better time than right now to be saved. Today is the day of salvation. I believe in this congregation tonight. God is wanting to do a work. Whatever it is God's leading us to do. Let's do what he's leading us to do for his glory. And you'll leave this place with joy. A smile on your face. Closer to God than when you came. God help us to be broken. Heavenly Father. Lord as we come to this time of decision. God I pray that we'll answer you and say yes. Father, whatever it is you're leading us to do, help us to yield to you. Cooperate with you tonight. Lord, I, I think about a congregation this size. There's no telling how many people each of us come in contact with. If we were to just add it all together, no telling. There's people that, that some can reach that others can't reach. But God, we have been placed where we are for a purpose. You have a work that you want to do through us. So I pray in Jesus' name, God, that we will commit to sharing the good news.
Lord, that we'll talk about Jesus as much, if not more, than we talk about our hobbies and things that we, that we enjoy. Lord, that we would enjoy you most of all and we'd share Jesus. Father, I pray we'll commit tonight. I pray for um, that, that, that souls would, would be saved even tonight. God, have your way and will to be done. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to ask if you would, our musicians are beginning to play. Would you stand together?